Good morning, everybody. It is September 24th, Friday. Um, boy, I, I live in just a technically messed up world. I mean, I'm adept with technology, but I was sitting here and I did a whole long explanation about what I'm doing today, the artist I'm going to be uh, presenting that I work with and had everything. And then I went to play her music and the computer, uh, computer wouldn't play it. And I just sat here trying to do things, trying to look really cool and, you know, engaged here and all this stuff. And then I suddenly looked down and realized I still had my interface plugged in from working on a song last night. And it was muting and taking away everything. So needless to say, I just put a bunch of effort into something that I screwed up again. Just, I need to really have like a, treat, treat, doing what I do like a pilot, have a clipboard sitting right here with a checklist on it. Just go make sure everything, make sure the phone's off, make sure the, you know, the interface is unplugged, make sure I'm on, you know, do not disturb and all. It's just, it's always something. It's just incredible. So I'm starting fresh. This is fresh. Okay. Um, the only good thing uh, about starting over was there were gardeners across the street blowing like crazy with their leaf blowers and, uh, it was a little distracting to hear that noise, and it's even more distracting to go outside and see my car and the yard completely coated in dust from them uh, and their refusal to take out a rake and just rake some things up. It's always got to be the blower out there just with this huge, like a mushroom cloud coming up. So uh, so this morning I took the boys out for a for a walk. They pooped. They did their thing. They visited some people on the walk and uh, got them home. They had breakfast and they're relaxing now. And um, I've got a 11 a.m. Uh, band Zoom to, with management that we've got to do and discuss a bunch of things. And then this afternoon I'm doing an interview with Sheldon Dingwall. And we're going to be talking about a bunch of things. And I also, like I showed it yesterday, the uh, the Dingwall base for the auction for the Elephant Sanctuary arrived, and I'll be signing that and um, holding on to that until such time as there's a winner, and then I'll be shipping it to them. And I'll put in a, find out who they are, and put in a signed picture and all kinds of stuff with it, because it's really going to be, they're going to love it. I just played it yesterday, and it's a really sweet instrument, so uh, I'm, I'm excited about that, and I'm deeply touched by Sheldon for making this um, donation to the Elephant Sanctuary. And if you have any curiosity about it, the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee, and it's a remarkable place, and it's uh, one of my main donation sites. Uh, I really so appreciate the work that they're doing. And uh, quickly, we had our band meeting. Here's our set list for our tour. That's all I'm going to show you. I don't want people like freeze framing it and going, ooh, I don't know about that. I'm going to change. It'll be good. We thought this went out pretty damn good. So I was thinking about the artists that I would work with today. And I did find a thing online about her that I'm going to read because it, it explains a lot. But um, her name is Laura Allen. Um, we did an album, a self titled album, in 1978 uh, together. And Laura was, she's one of these people like, as soon as you met her, kind of like Valerie Carter, there was, there's a bunch of these people that the minute you walk into a room with them, you suddenly, oh yeah, they have a presence about them, an aura about them, however you want to express it. Um, they're truly remarkable people. And the biggest heartbreak was that, uh, that Laura went through a, a terrible bout with cancer, fought it valiantly, but... Um, did pass, succumb to it back, and she was only 56 uh, when she passed away. But um, so this album that we did was produced by Chuck Plotkin and Greg Prestopino, and all of the songs on the album were written by Laura. I'm going to read this thing though that was pretty pretty cool. Um, let me see what we got here. So I'm just going to do some some reading, some copious reading. Um, so she started to sing and make up songs while learning to walk and talk, and it wasn't long before it was time to find this little girl an instrument that she could express herself on. Her mother, Nadine, bought her a guitar for her seventh birthday, and I guess the rest is history. 
She played in some of the folk clubs in Southern California as early as the age of nine and 10, accompanied by teacher and folk recording artist, Joyce James. And by the time she was in her early teens, Laura had found herself singing lead in a Motown soul band all the way over in Heidelberg, Germany, where she attended school for a year. Uh, shortly after returning to the States with her new individual sense of the world, she had the opportunity to meet up with the likes of Joni Mitchell, David Crosby, and Jackson Brown. She began to make musical instruments at this time with her early mentor, Jolene Lapidus, um, or Joellen Lapidus, and, and was allowed by her parents to travel to the Big Sur Folk Festival where Lapidus sold Joni Mitchell her first dulcimer. And God knows Joni was like just one of the great proponents of dulcimer in her early music. Um, a little later, she was invited to play on David Crosby's first solo album. Alan's picture appears on this classic, her zither playing on Traction on the Rain. Um, it was the first try, uh, her, was her first thumbprint in vinyl for this bright young talent who would spend the next two and a half decades de dedicating her life to the pursuit of creativity through her music, songwriting, and artistic achievements. With a debut album of original songs released on Electra Asylum in 1978, backed by a who's who of the best musicians of that era, Jeff Piccaro, Leland Sklar, uh, Jim Keltner, Billy Payne, Chuck Rainey, and so on. She moved to New York uh, and, and followed with a prolific run at writing songs for other artists that were covered by the likes of Kenny Rogers, Lynn Anderson, Bill Champlin. She even had artists as far away as China singing her songs in Mandarin and Cantonese. Alan sang backup vocals on albums by Bette Midler, Bonnie Raitt, Eric Carmen, and even reappears on a couple of Crosby Nash LPs with some more zither playing. Another vinyl album uh, to this woman's credit is A New Age First, uh, entitled Reflections in 1980, which featured Paul Horn on flute and Alan on vocals and mon uh, multiple string instruments. So that's just a, a, a touch of, um, of what Laura was, was all about. Hold on, I'm gonna get this here. We're getting back to hopefully where th things are gonna work. Um, I don't want this to mess up again. Uh, we're going to soon find out uh, here. Uh, so I'm going to play a few songs uh, from this just to give you a taste of Laura Allen, and you can dig deeper if, if you want at that point. Uh, the first one I'm going to play, hopefully, uh, is called Promises, and it's myself and Hal Blaine, Waddy Wachtel on guitar, Joel Bernstein on guitar, who's a great photographer, uh, Dave Grisman on mandolin, uh, Billy Payne on keyboards, and the great Tommy Morgan on harmonica. Tommy's one of the greatest harmonica players. Like, if you're listening to any of the TV stuff I did with Mike Post, like the Rockford Files and stuff, that's Tommy Morgan playing harmonica. But Tommy played, traveled the country playing, you know, harmonica with symphony orchestras and stuff. Fabulous musician. So let's see if Promises works here. Okay, it's acting... Touchy, hold on. I'm gonna try one more time. I ask myself, am I doing the wrong thing? Am I leading you on and thinking only of myself? But when you hold Promises they're so easy to make when love's got you in itself. And forever is such an easy thing to say. Still, the future is not for us to see. Things could change, you can never tell. We gotta go ahead and make our promises anyway.
on that was done by David Campbell, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, it, it's that, that kind of a writing and voice, kind of like the, you know, and losing them young, like Eva Cassidy and um, uh, Nicolette Larson. There's been so many that, we, that were so good that we lost just way too young. You know, they had so much, I think, left in them. So um, here's, let me see, check this out. Okay, this one is called uh, Love Can Be. My computer got all screwed up here. Uh, this, uh, this, on this one, it's myself and Jim Keltner and Craig Durge, Joel Bernstein on guitar, Ernie Watts on sax. And the background vocals are Cameron Twilley, uh, Nettie Gould, and Bill Champlin. So here we go. This is Love Can Be. acting up a little bit. There's some, I think I need to reboot my computer. Hold on. Hold on. Curiosity is something we are all now commercial. That's how we Okay, goodbye.
Just, I, I, just great. I'm so glad I, I got back to her. We start okay. in the dark. Sorry about these commercials. Everything's going to hell today. And then hold on. Um, I'll do one more song. This is called "Slip and Slide." It's funny. We've got our, our slipping and sliding in the uh, uh, immediate family. So yeah. Kind of connections, I guess, a little bit. Um, and on this one, it's myself and Rick Murata on drums, Jay Winding on keys, uh, Steve Foreman on percussion, and Brock Walsh and Valerie Carter are the background singers on this one. So this is Slip and Slide, Laura Allen. <laughs> So whenever you feel 
long fade just let the thing settle on you um laura allen you know that's self-titled laura allen 1978 um she may be gone but a hell of a legacy that she left musically and uh i feel very fortunate that i got to work with her so um i'm going to uh get going um get this thing uh, uploaded and get ready for our band meeting um, got a few details to sort out. I'm doing the, um, I'm going to be on the Kelly Clarkson show on the 30th. Now, I think it's the same day. I'll, I'll find out. I've got to call some people uh, about uh, arrangements and what's going on for it. But they, they're ha having me come down and sit in with the band, do some stuff, and then do a song with, with Kelly. I'm really looking forward to that. I'll s surprise you with the tune that I picked. They sent me some songs to choose from and I picked one that I always loved and, and I've done it once before on another project so it'll be fun to play it with her um, and then I've got my um, interview basically I'm not sure I'm going to call him and find out what format we're doing Skype or Zoom or whatever uh, with Sheldon Dingwall this afternoon so there's always lots of things going on um, and a few other projects to take care of. So I'm going to wish everybody a wonderful day. I'm my, my heart and soul is with all of you frontline. You're not, like I've said, you're not frontline anymore. You're, you're doing your job. At this point, you were truly frontline when we didn't know what was happening and you were really putting yourselves up. The tragedy now is you're still having to do this and the solution is right there, uh, out, just outside the door. Uh, and that people... If they're not getting vaccinated and they're suddenly hospitalized, you're having to deal with this. And it's really tragic that you shouldn't have to be dealing with these people. These people should have taken care of themselves and allowed you to uh, go on with things that were absolutely necessary. Um, my disappointment at humanity can run really deep at times, you know, and the things that people do. But thank you for all you do. And this is people in all walks from from the medical community to the post office to the fire department to the supermarket to the police i mean everybody who's having to deal with public at this point is uh 
potentially, you know, putting themselves in harm's way, even if they've had their vaccinations, somebody can come in pretty sick and, and it gets you sick still. I mean, you're not going to be intubated and all that, um, you, but you might feel like you've got the flu or whatever. Um, but thank you for, for how much you have done for going on two years. It's really unbelievable. This is it's still as virulent as it is. So uh, I'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to figure out what to do then. But right now, I'm just happy to have uh, had a moment to spend with Laura. And uh, check out her stuff, though. She's really uh, one of those special artists. So take good care, and I will see you then. Okay, bye-bye.